Hey, thanks for clicking on the video. Welcome to the KTZ garage where we're going to install the IC7300 receiver adapter. Also, open up the 1026, change the dip switch in there, and get it set up for an external antenna. Now we're going to open up the 7300 and get this installed. On the sides, you only want to take the two screws off that are above the split. We're only taking the top portion off. Two screws on each side, that's four screws. And we're going to take out every screw on the top. It's 14 screws total. I've got several different sets and um, they're made in Germany. Great screwdrivers. This is the tuner uh, control, so I want to keep this uh, so I can use a tuner, but I'm going to have to dr either drill a hole or use a Dremel or something to give this cabling some relief in the back. Remove this temporarily. I just have to pull it. Some of the adapters on the market come with RCA connections. I searched around and I found this one. It's got the SMA ends on it. So it would be easier for me to convert that over to BNC. I have these adapters to go into the 1026. I had this out earlier and uh, I put the BNC adapters on the SMA ends. This is the RX7300 SMA adapter. Okay, So this will go in that slot. You'll see that in front of this cable there is a indication that that is the receive. So this is the back of the radio, this is the front of the radio. We will pull the receive wire out. You want to pull it straight out, but you want to grasp it from, not from the wire, but from the connector. Insert that into this adapter. And then insert this end where that wire just came out of. There we go. What's nice about this adapter is that it is, they have indicators. So I discovered Steve Ellington's channel, so I want to give a shout out to him and thank him for the work he did on his channel about this uh, receiver mod. Now the MFJ1026. I have to say, as long as we're giving the shout outs here, uh, uh, the Radio Mechanic channel outstanding video on this uh, 1026 and the insides of it. So I want to say thanks to him and the work that he's done on his channel. I hope I didn't get the same guy assembling this one that, that he did. On jumper number two it's pinned between one and two. We want to change this uh, pin to jumper number one for the external antenna. Let's see, we're going to pull this straight up. And there we go. So everything is looking good inside. The solder joints are looking okay. Um, 
here's the relay which uh, in theory the uh, receive only mod that we did to the 7300 will bypass this relay so let's get the cover back on and try it out uh, a lot of people have uh, their opinions on MFJ this doesn't look like it's put together all that bad the auxiliary antenna is the sensing antenna now the main antenna in radio that's where these come into play SMA to PL259 these are BNC to SMA I'll have a parts list down in the comments section that's what it looks like that will enable me to use these BNC jumper cables that'll go to the 7300 BNC connectors there okay folks I just want to be clear on how I'm connecting the 1026 to the 7300 so I've marked the 1026 here and the 7300 we're going from the main antenna input to the output on the 7300 and we're going from the radio uh, port which is the output to the input on the 7300 a little bit of a hump there um, from this adapter I have it seated in there properly it's just a just a skosh too too big not a big deal as far as I'm concerned let's test this thing and see how it does okay so here we are uh, 40 meters and uh, this is with the unit off and um, I discovered after a lot of testing with the knobs and phasing and antenna gain that reducing the main antenna gain is counterproductive to pulling out the weak signals but uh, most of the adjustments are with the auxiliary antenna and the phase uh, adjustment so this is with the unit off and this is with it on now I am having trouble getting this area to phase or null the noise out within the 7 megahertz so this is uh, roughly 6 megahertz down here 6 and under so uh, I think more antenna testing is or in order but you can see that it is functioning testing out the rig here uh, 7300 in the shack uh, looks like I'm running a little bit too much compression but um, I got a good copy on you down here in Colorado about 5 8 uh, yeah peaking about 5 8 down here over All right, well, I appreciate that, North Idaho. Uh, so, yep, uh, down here just north of Denver. So, a um, uh, little town called Broomfield. And uh, just setting up the shack here, uh, trying to reduce the noise from the big city over. Um, say again, did you say Broomfield? Roger, Roger. Okay, yeah, so uh, it sounds like the Thornton area. Thornton, is that it? Roger, Roger. Thornton it is. Well, back in the day, there used to be a lot of pheasant hunting in this area. And, uh, yeah, out there in Thornton as well. But that's going back years and years ago. Boy, things sure did develop up here. When I moved to this place, it was a uh, two-lane two road and a stop sign. Now it's, uh, it's about eight-lane highway. Over. This is for the shack here down in the suburbs I, I do mostly portable ham radio stuff out in the woods up in the mountains where it's dead quiet uh, is it worth the money eh, I think that's something that you're gonna have to decide if you're having issues with QRM RFI I think there's a lot of other things that you can do if your noise is coming from inside your house but if it's uh, around your neighborhood 
and like in my case, you need an external antenna. Now the external antenna that I installed uh, could be better. Uh, the ham stick uh, has a very narrow bandwidth, so by adjusting the 1026, I'm only getting a very small portion of the band that I can work with. I appreciate you guys. Take care.